Welcome to part one of a two-part series entitled Venerated Sufi Saint Rabia of Basra, Vegan, The Bliss and Pleasure of Divine Love. Rabia of Basra was a venerated Arab Muslim saint, poet, and Sufi mystic. Sufis were originally named after the cloak or robes they wore. Their practice of asceticism and celibacy separate them from other devotees. It said the first person to be called Sufi was Abu Hashim of Kufa, who passed away in 767 AD. Sufis believe the true saint covets nothing in this world but is devoted only to God. Vegetarianism is deeply rooted in Sufism as an essential step toward spiritual development. In adopting poverty, they consider one should not marry since the needs of a spouse could not be fulfilled. Born around the year 717 AD in Basra, a seaport city in southern Iraq, Hasrat Rabia al Adawiya al Qasiya, widely known as Rabia al Basri, was one of the foremost spiritual influences in the Islamic world. Rabia, meaning fourth was the fourth daughter of an underprivileged but highly respected family. Although Rabia did not leave any written works by herself, she is revered and beloved for her faith, piety, and passions, and is considered to be the first female Sufi saint of Islam. One night, her father dreamt that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told him, Your newly born daughter is a favor of the Lord and shall lead many Muslims to the path of deliverance. Hasrat Rabia spent her whole life in devotion to God. She was the pioneer of the divine love doctrine in the Islam tradition. Her devotion to God was so intense, her life was lived in complete and loving surrender to God. When someone suggested she was fit to be an abbess, Hasrat Rabia replied, I am abbess of myself. Whatever is within me, I do not bring out. Whatever is outside me, I do not let in. If anyone enters and leaves, it has nothing to do with me. I watch over my heart, not mud and clay. According to Farid Udin, a later Sufi saint and poet, Hasrat Rabia's parents had no money to wrap her with a cloth and no oil in the house to light a lamp. Her mother requested that her husband borrow some oil from a neighbor, but he had made up his mind never to ask anyone for anything except the Creator. He pretended to knock on the neighbor's door before going back to his house empty-handed and telling his wife they are all asleep. He was sad, and while he slept, he dreamt that the beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, appeared to him and said, Do not be grieved. You have been blessed with a daughter who will be a great saint. Her intercession will be wished for by 70,000 of my community. Tomorrow, sends a letter to Isa Randa, the Emir of Basra, reminding him by this sign that every night he is wont to offer 100 benedictions to me, and on a Friday night, 400. But this Friday, he has neglected me. So tell him that. As a penance, he must give you a hundred dinars. Rabia's father awoke in tears in the morning, stood up and walked right up to the palace of Isaradan. Hearing the message, 
the army realized that the beloved prophet, peace be upon him, had remembered him. Overjoyed and in gratitude, he donated 1,000 dinars to the less fortunate people and joyfully gave 400 dinars to Rabia's father. The Amir commented, By God, if you ever happen to need anything, let me know. Legend has it that following the death of her parents, Rabia experienced a famine and was separated from her three sisters. One evening, Rabia left the house to find food when she was grabbed and sold in the market as a slave, serving in the house of a rich man. Rabia had to work hard for long hours, with no one to care for her. The terrified child held on to God. She fasted and would spend the whole night in prayer and hardly sleeping during the night. Rabia would frequently stand in prayer as the day's activities got underway. One hot night, Rabia's master heard her pleasing prayer to the Lord. When he looked out of the window into the courtyard, he saw the solitary figure of Rabia in prayer. Oh God! You are aware that the sole longing of my heart is to be totally surrendered to your command. The very light of my eyes is service to your court. If it were up to me, I would never cease serving you, even for an hour. Yet you have caused me to be subject to a creature. For this I come late to your service. The master of the house noticed something very strange about the scene. There was a light above Rabia's head, and the divine light lit the whole house. The master felt that it was disrespectful to keep such a holy person in his service, so he decided to serve her instead. Rabia preferred to leave the house to worship in solitude, so he set her free. She set off out of the town and went into the desert. Farid Udin recorded that Rabia spent time at a Sufi hermitage when she went into the desert to pray. She was surrounded by deer, gazelle, and mountain goat people listening to her as she recited the Holy Quran. In memorial of the friend of God, Farid Udin tells how Hasrat Rabia was once observed rushing through Basra streets with a pail of water and a fire pot in each hand. When questioned what she was doing, she replied, I want to put out the fires of hell and burn down the rewards of paradise. They block the way to Allah. I do not want to worship from fear of punishment or for the promise of reward, but simply for the love of Allah. So that both veils might be lifted from truth seekers, for them to have a sincere purpose, Hazrat Rabia wanted to unblock their way to God. Her ultimate goal was union with God. When someone asked her to come outside to see the flowers of spring, she invited them to come inside instead in order to contemplate their Creator. Her contemplation of the Creator was greater than her contemplation of the creation. This message has also been emphasized time and again by our most beloved Supreme Master Ching Hai, as in the following occasions. The knowledge of good and bad in this world we know, but what does it help us? Even if we try to avoid the bad quality of actions and we try to do all the time the good. It will not take us anywhere. It just takes us to another reincarnation and experience another temptation or a bad uh, obstruction again. Unless you meet an enlightened master and become enlightened yourself, erase all the past karma for you. You never go anywhere doing bad or doing good. Doing bad, you go to hell. Doing good, you reincarnate. Maybe 
as human or maybe in heaven and then come back again. Even as the king of heaven, you will also one day come back as animals, people even. It depends on your merit, uh, your karma. We always have to pray to the almighty God, okay? And dedicate all our good and fellow to the almighty to ask him to forgive our sins and give us liberation. New disciples, old disciples should all say this. Recommended by all you. <laughs> Before initiation and after initiation and uh, all the time. Hmm? Okay. And when we're working, we dedicate that to God Almighty as well, not us. Okay, not that we do it. Like this, we can avoid karma, yeah? Yes, Master. Good or bad karma, we don't want. <laughs> With gratitude for the wise teachings of the enlightened saints and sages, we look forward to learning more about divine love with the venerated Rabia of Basra in our next episode. Vegan. Added extra IQ. Francis viewers, it's been a pleasure to have you with us today 